Yeah, you can start recording. And if anyone has questions, please just raise your hand uh, virtually or uh, put in the chat box. We'll have a we'll have ten minutes at the end for questions. Yeah, you can type your questions in the chat box. What I'll share. Um, is it in a full full screen view now? Yeah, we can see it completely. Thanks. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Minakshi Das, and I have recently completed my PhD on taxonomy and ecology of spiders. Though I have uh, uh, dwelled on some taxonomical parts, but uh, the ecological part is actually what I'm interested in. So this will be like uh, not showing that what you can analyze or what you can do that uh, for this uh, slide will be for the people who are now starting their work and what papers to read. And you can see also like what kind of uh, like uh, structures or what kind of what are the com components that you should see when you are in the field. Okay, so as my topic is web architecture and gill structure of spiders of uh, especially of Andaman and Nicobar Islands, some examples I will give on the later part. So coming to the web architecture. So the spider and prey sociometry is very, that uh, it's very much uh, now, uh, it's, the people are more working on this. So it, as you can see, uh, we have always, uh, uh, um, studied how the animals in nature, they are making their structures. Many engineers and architects, they have inspired from the biologist and coming to the web parts, as you can see, there are three important parts, the size, the orientation and the location of the web. Huh. So the location of the wave is mainly like up to the how the prey interception and the influence of prey density. Sorry. So again, uh, the web building spiders, the, those spiders who like exclusively build webs, they are like the model ecosystems for trophic uh, interactions and also to um, study how predator prey interaction are uh, easy to quantify. You can, uh, you can just see one uh, um, web, one web or web and you can see how the prey density changes across the web that we'll see in the later part again there are like so many kind of kinds of web they will that will come through first is or web that you can see here and the tangle web then sheet web and there are also sheet tangle webs so this is an example um, in every slide I have given the um, reference from where I have taken the photographs or uh, the definition or anything I have taken. You guys can go through those papers and read those papers. These are beautiful papers. And as you can see here, this is a Dutch print of 16th, 17th century. Here you can see these Parisians are looking at one orb web how, uh, as to how to construct their city. So the, in the orb web, if you can see in a planner orb web, the spider will be sitting in the center portion. It will be looking uh, the whole orb web. It will be looking for the whole orb web for the prey. Huh. If there is any vibration in, on any spirals or any radial um, silk, so the spider will get to know. So these uh, you know, Parisians were using this kind of methods to study, to, uh, to construct their cities. Again, uh, the main uh, thing that we can see is the ecological sociometry, that is the uh, uh, relationship between uh, how the elemental composition and the basic ecological traits of an organism in a particular ecosystem. Then the predator prey interaction are uh, much, much important for evalu evaluating the ecosystem re restoration, how the rest uh, ecosystem can be restored. Because if, um, 
all you should be knowing about the lot cum volterra model so if uh, the prey uh, or the predator if any of these components is skewed then the ecosystem will um, like will be devastated and again the spite web building spiders are excellent model for management practices and prey predatory interactions and each forest type will have different kinds of web web patterns so i want to say much in this slides later we'll get to see so uh, for beginners there are four major kills so space web weavers which are shown by the family dictinidae dinifidae theridae or web weavers erin by shown by family erinidae tetragonidae oloboridae foliage runners anephanidae and clubionidae then ambushers and stalkers uh, philotromidae salticidae and thomisidae coming to the what this us so space web weavers like they will be in once in a 3d space the webs will be in a 3d space and orbs as you can see uh, as you know the orbs are like round structures so any like round structures those are called uh, orbs and those round webs are called orb web and foliage runners as you can see the some spiders will be running on the um, bushes or like small small like hedge rows they will be just running on for their prey so those are foliage runners and some are ambushers and stalkers huh. so they will hide behind the leaf or they will um, camouflage themselves within the twigs or flowers huh. here you can see this uh, <clears throat> this bird dung spider i don't know how many of you have seen this uh, spider this is phrenarchne silonica huh this is very beautiful spider if you see it in the field the female especially resembles the bird dung so again coming to well just like brush up on this so how like if you see different kind of spiders there are so many species of spiders but uh, how the every um, how every web how every silk is different from another it all de depends upon their spinnerets morphology spinnerets spinning spinning uh, like the, the spider spins their web so if you see that huh, so the spiders like when they spin their webs they um, uh, it comes from a, a certain uh, Uh, or um, like um, the organ it it is called spinneret so here uh, i have made this so this is one hypothetical ancestor which have all the cribellum and all the spinnerets but if you see in the modern spider it has no, it, it, the cribellum the crib the cribellum is gone there is only one like uh, reduced cribellum and again uh, there is a colorless structure this colorless structure is found on the theridae family theridae is in uh, cob cobweb spiders um this is just a basic classification so as you people know like how the spiders have gone like through phylogenetically this is very simple one so this is followed by codington codington so erinae this is the order erinae from in which spiders are placed in then in mesothelae this is like segmented bodied spiders and opisthothelae is the one commonly we see this mygalomorphy are the uh, tarantulas ha uh, the theraposita family in theraposita family those tarantulas you see the most and uh, again erinomorphy are all the um orb webbing uh, like sorry uh, web building spiders not orb webbing web building spiders so in erinomorphy there are cribellets and e cribellets that much you have to know for now huh. the, the, this is an example of cribellet spider you can see how the um, silk structure is different from the e cribellet where there is absence of cribellum so here you can see uh, to construct a simple like this structure or web structure there are like four kinds of silk there is major ampullet silk for frame and the radius and uh, flageliform silk for the captured spiral where the preys are captured and there is piriform silk 
and there is minor ampullate silk. These are all um, coming from different different spinnerets. Uh, so there are two rows of spinnerets, anterior and posterior. Uh, if you are more into spider taxonomy, then you will get to know it. But this is about simple ecology, so I won't get much into it. But these are four kinds of um, major silks that you will find in a uh, spider uh, web. So here, I don't know if you can see it clearly or not. So this uh, uh, one paper, they have done like this uh, PBO web. PBO means they have uh, taken a, a very um, tensile strength ka fiber and they have uh, uh, made a web. And then from spider silk, they have made this web. For both this kind of web, they uh, applied some pressure. Uh, excuse me. It is connected. Hello. Hello. I think yeah. Uh, can continue. Like I asked me to person. Is it okay now? Yeah, we can go ahead. Okay. Okay. So in this, you can see how the spider, the spider silk with much, much pressure also, it retained the pressure. But for the PPO web, it, it couldn't retain this pressure. For this, uh, I'll show you one simple video. This is a bug on a nephila web. So you can see how much this uh, web is uh, like the tensile strength of the web. See the web, the bug is like literally struggling to get up the web, but all these uh, structures, if you see, these are all uh, capture silk. Huh? The, the, so the bug is totally captured in the web. So now you see um, just a simple gl glimpse of uh, different kinds of webs. So this is the Thelakantha brevi spinner web, hmm, decorated with, you can see here, uh, this one drop, another drop. It decorated uh, its uh, web with different spiral balls. Uh, if anyone can answer in the chat box, why a spider should decorate, decorate its web in the um, uh, like with these spiral balls? If anyone can answer, um, you can write your answers. Um, and again, this is another um, Telakantha webs. You can see here. Two, two webs. So these telaganthas are uh, social spiders. Sometimes they will build two. Sometimes they will build up to 20 also. In Little Andaman, I have seen 20 telaganthas in one particular uh, construct construction that was going on. 20 telagantha spiders were, were there. And here it's a, it's a three-dimensional web. If you can see this, uh, this is a tent kind of web. Huh? In this, the egg sac is in the between. So here uh, I will just say um, why this is a planner, like 2D kind of web, and this is a 3D kind of web. So uh, when the evolution was going on, so uh, there are many papers that say that this Cytophora, this Cytophorinae, this, um, uh, this clade, they come up, came up with this 3D kind of web to uh, protect their egg sacs from wasps. Uh, so because in that period, wasps were very much like parasitizing on the this parasitoid wasps. They were emerging in that period. So sudden there was a dive, uh, like this evolution was uh, from 2D to 3D kind of web. Again, uh, if, you, if you are um, like a uh, little much uh, um, like familiar with spiders, you must be knowing this is called the signature spider or the um, cross spider. And this is the poultice. So you can see how this is different. So this in between this structure, if you can see, this is called a stabilimentum. So why, what's the like uh, use of stabilimentum? The first thing that uh, from the word itself, if you can see, uh, stabilimentum is a like uh, for the web to be stable. But if you can see here, there are no stabilimentum, but still, 
this waves are very much nearer to each other huh? so uh, the so the many papers will also say like it was in 1980 volart and with they all say the stability momentum is for to stabilize the um, uh, orb wave but no uh, now the like uh, with many more technologies that have come up so this um, the papers uh, that um, are now there like uh, uh, coding coding turns and then selden uh, they are saying that this uh, stability momentums are to uh, like uh, resemble the flower patterns if you see any flower petal so if you see in the uv light you won't see like the beautiful petals colors or anything what the b sees as we see in the uv light so in the uv light the what b sees is uh, the structure of the petal so the venation and all those like linings so that's what the spider is trying to resemble so in this this radius you can see these are very closely placed so in the uh, like previous video uh, that i showed you the bugs uh, like stuck on the web huh if one spider um, one um, prey is stuck on this web it will be very difficult for it uh, for it to um, like get out huh so like um, don't read one paper and come up with a theory like okay this is the thing or that is the thing always talk to the experts or whoever is there huh? um, because in your locality in your habitat in your forest type those things might be different so always 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 note down whatever you are seeing in the field because anything might be new again um, this is a nephila this is a like uh, like it can like disperse like up to uh, i have what i have seen is up to um, 20 to 30 meters it can disperse it can just through a drag line it can like uh, balloon itself from one uh, one bank of the river to another bank so here you can see this a uh, highly visible barrier webs hmm so these barrier webs are to um, this barrier webs are another like uh, if you uh, later will come to the niche part this barrier webs are another kind of niche for the kleptoparasites what are kleptoparasites though there are some spiders which uh, dwell uh, which uh, inhabited this nephila webs for uh, to catch on the prey that nephila is also catching so the nephila it won't move it uh, as i said it will stick to the hub part huh. so it will resemble a flower pattern or there are other also like um, they don't want to show themselves to the predators hmm. and uh, so this barriers in this if you closely examine all these um, uh, cells now in the nephila web you can see these barriers so so this this is a highly mosaic landscape for the kleptoparasites again uh, there is a cyclosa as i was saying uh, if you see some of the spiders they what they will do they will uh, camouflage their eggs with their uh, silk uh, spirals silk balls or somehow sometimes they will mix debris with the silk so as to resemble the egg so the predator won't uh, come like won't be able to parasitize their eggs and this is another poltis i just found this photo very picture very beautiful so i kept it because my you, some people might be new to spiders or like just so i wanted people to know how beautiful spider webs can be and uh, so okay so what is habitat and what is niche Uh, i don't know how many of you are from ecological background or um, other backgrounds so just to give it give you a glance a habitat is a physical place for where an organism is found or living but a niche uh, describes how that particular organism links to its physical and biological um, environment so uh, uh, 
uh, as you know this micro habitat this micro, uh, we are not now like much talking about the niche or habitat okay these are all there in our study area or something we'll be talking about but more we are focusing if you are coming to invertebrates or smaller verte vertebrates so you will be more be talk, in the papers they will be more talking about the micro habitats so uh, so here you can see this is a habitat, but this is a niche and this is a niche. So the niche concept, the uh, it's if you are from geological background, you must be knowing that uh, this uh, pre-competitive niche where uh, the uh, collection of condition, conditions and sources, uh, species can survive and grow and reproduce uh, without any like uh, uh, competition. This is a more theoretical one, but uh, the realized niche where there is competition and uh, there is like, this is also called post-competitive niche and actually elaborates on what the species would actually do where there are multiple competitors. Uh, there are many models, many equations on this. If you are interested in this, you can like one can just work on this kind of this, what, what niches are there. So coming to the guild, so why I, I was talking about niche, you will come to know. So because it, uh, here from, I took this um, definition from this paper, the symbol of and Diane 1991. So they describe a guild as a group of species that exploit the same class of environmental resources in a similar way. This term group together is uh, to be the species without regard to taxonomic position. So you can see it won't regard the taxonomic position. So uh, one guild can also hold like one spider and also a ant. Huh, that uh, like it won't be always stick to one uh, taxonomic group. And again, the guild has a position comparable in the classification of exploitation patterns to the genus in phylogenetic schemes. So uh, they have explained it in here very beautifully. To be considered a member of the foliage greening guild in the oak, oak woodland, the major portion of a bird species diet had to consist of arthropods, obtained from the foliage zones of oak. As a result, birds that occasionally use the foliage zone were excluded, even though they may have exerted some influence on the guild's food supply. So it uh, doesn't always depend uh, like always it won't be like in the same definition you cannot mm, describe a organism skilled you have to see what kind of uh, like uh, prey that a diet breadth is there what kind of functional parameters are there you have to look at many uh, components to describe okay this leaf or this uh, croton uh, plant or this uh, um, this uh, forest, this uh, fragment is a guild for this particular organism. So now we are going a little deeper. So there are like, uh, so okay, this picture is from Rosemary and Gillespie et al. Uh, 2009. Yes, mm. you can see this whole paper. This paper is very beautiful, like it's in a very nice paper. You can see everything like uh, they have described each on uh, each of this uh, um, kinds of web there. So there is like typical odd web which are from the Erinida family, which we will uh, I'll, I'll 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 show some examples. And there were there are some tetragonidae. So one example like you can see this or Erinida and tetragonidae. Erinida are more like um, these are like uh, vertical vertical but uh, for tetragonidae this will be more like um, uh, horizontal laying little down and uh, tetragonidae you will find more on the water bodies if you are seeing one spider stretching out its leg on the water bodies then most probably like 80 percent it's a tetragonidae then these are some cribulate orbits this is uh, ulaboridae and uh, black widow tangle web like this is therididae all the therididae therididae like cobweb spiders they will build uh, tangle webs tangle webs and linifidae this is like the most species rich uh, family of uh, spider uh, so it will build a uh, sheet web which is 
yes this one then funnel wave it will like if you see in the field in the morning it will actually look like a funnel why i'm saying in the morning because the, all the dew drops will be sitting on the funnel and like on the edge of the opening of the web and you can see the drops going through the funnel and the spider is sitting at the end of the funnel so this is the funnel web this one and uh, then uh, uh, this another like the arenity will build like two three kind of webs they will build orb webs they will build this labyrinth kind of webs and they will also build this tent kind of web that i showed for cetophora molucensis or other cetophora the species also they they build uh, uh, tent webs here you can see this is one funnel web a close picture and this is mess kind of web by dictinidae and this is uloboridae's web uh, and this is a sheet web by dinifidae so again uh, again i'll be citing another paper this is Olfetal, <coughs> Olfetal 2022. This is a recent paper. Uh, guys who are really interested to work on spider ecology, you can read this paper. They have uh, like phylogenetically, they have structured and scaled each uh, web patterns and um, uh, their uh, guild patterns. So um, you can see here, I have just uh, take out some of the definitions here. Hmm. So you can see burrow or tube web. See this one. Oh, then substrate bound web. This one's and then aerial. I won't go into the definition because I think you can all read this. This hmm. aerial aerial webs. Huh. This kind of webs and then ground runners. Uh, you might might be knowing wolf spiders. Uh, if uh, people who know like what are wolf spiders if you can uh, just uh, um, write in the chat box what are the main uh, character of wolf spiders that make them famous i'll just wait so the main characters that made wolf spiders, uh, wolf spiders fam fam famous are that um, the wolf spiders they carry their eggs on their back so there are many memes many videos are there like recently, everyone is now, now like beloved with uh, wolf spiders. So then foliage runners. Uh, here you can see Salticidae, the jumping spiders, another beloved family of spiders. Then ambushers. Ambushers, as I said, they will like spend most of the time outside, except con constructed structure. And uh, they won't like actively, they like uh, foliage runners, they won't go and search for the prey. They will wait for the prey. As you can see here, this particular uh, thomicity, thomisus onustus, it's uh, sitting on a flower and it's waiting for the prey. It uh, primarily preys on bees, bumblebees, and uh, ants, sometimes wasps also. So here it's a very, uh, just to give you a, idea what we have to see when we are looking at the uh, spider web in a field. So for uh, any day uh, or any or weaving spiders, first you have to locate the spider. So here uh, mainly it will be on the hub. In some cases it will be inside some leaves. So this portion is called a retreat. So this is the hub, but it will be here. Hmm. Uh, if you are going in the daytime, it won't be at the hub because its body will be desiccated due to like uh, in Andaman Nicobar, like it's like it's too hot after 7 p.m. Uh, sorry, 7 a.m. onwards, like it will be too hot. So the spiders only come like from uh, 7, 6, uh, 6 p.m. in the evening to 5.36. You can study the spider actually building the web and digesting their own web. Hmm. So here you can see like multiple cells, those anchor points where the, uh, the structure is anchored to, like this will be some twigs or some um, like structures, um, other constructing like um, man-made structures. And this is the frame thread. And again, uh, here also you will find the radius 
and here also you can find the radius so this is the primary attachment frame huh. so from here some uh, drag lines or uh, like some attachment lines will go and it will be attached to the um, uh, like what nearby any structure any structures i mean in a forest if you're seeing it will be uh, attached to any bark or uh, it will it can be attached to twigs or leaves anything so here i am shown some prey huh? and um, you can also write in the you know, chat box there is one question for you guys um why uh, like spiders if you if you if you have seen spider webs and here i have shown some also why the spider webs are oblong like why it's more like constructed like very much minutely constructed why the spider constructs uh, much more on the south side than the north side if you can just write in the chat box because now like i don't think every if you if everyone will say then it will be a problem so here is another example just look at the spider for now okay so this was the spider so this is called a pseudo or weaver pseudo or weaver because this is a cribbled spider first if you remember the classification that i showed cribbled ecribbled so this has a cribbulum cribbulum is a form kind of structure it will uh, when the spinnerets are spinning the silk no it will comb the web it will gradually form the web that's why you are seeing this beautiful like sheet kind of like like oh, wow how you comb your hair uh, it will look like very beautifully straightened up uh, so you will see those kind of structures here and again uh, this is the exact and uh, this is the spider another spider hmm. here the spider you can see the uh, what the spider is showing the legs uh, if you see in the field you can only see the legs and this is a spider a spider out of the leaf curl so this is a fesenia protensa the species is fesenia protensa now you can see the difference between uh, the cribbulet and e cribbulet how it was using more of the abdomen the cribbulum side and how it's how it's using this uh, legs and uh, same uh, this is uh, gastrocanthus okay so this is a gold, golden or weaver as i have shown earlier huh. this both of her are uh, like or weaver erinids hmm but you can see how it's dif uh, very different hmm because here it's more spiral these are all radial uh, this uh, web has been uh, like um, like damaged to some of it huh. why i'm showing this hmm this also you can see here i think there is too much exposure okay so here uh, this is also like the silks are like clamped together why i am showing this kind of pictures because if you go to field you will only not see like beautifully constructed webs where the spider is sitting you can take the photo you can measure the radius you can take the like interradial segments you can measure the, everything no you won't find all of this uh, sometimes you will find this kind of webs also don't exclude them add them also because in nature there is always dynamics and you should add everything in your data again this is a rq huh. you can see how the stabilimentum is structured here hmm. okay here so this one is in, why i added this picture i already talked about setopora no but uh, this one was from one island snob island in andaman nicobar islands so it's near it's uh, inside the mahatma gandhi national park so here this was like uh, twice of my size i'm 5 feet 1 
so this you you can just like the whole i'm not saying just you can see this this was four feet but all these ankle lines and threads and this attachment threads all of this like including it was twice of my size this was the spider you can see here and this were the sp spider links so i it was like um, what new moon i think so when i just i was just walking with my red light on head head torch so when i passed by it so it was like gleaming so it was a newly constructed web like uh, it, some some parts of it were newly constructed uh, because the spiral links were just uh, patched um, there are some more examples like beautiful, beautiful spiders, Paravexia dehani. Uh, you can see the spiders at night. Uh, at morning, it will uh, it will be inside the retreat. It will be inside dried up leaves. But you can see its web like fully like like a poultice web. And this is Erinus mitificus, Gastrocantha deli. And then these are the theridids cobwebs, and these are the thomisids. Theridids means cobweb spider. Like uh, you, uh, you can see this spider. The web is like the abdomen is a triangular shape, and it's holding its uh, egg sac. Huh? The legs are like it, it's looking like a spider. But uh, if you see, this is a Argyrodes uh, Argyrodes diglipurensis, and this is uh, Ariamnes uh, flagellans, I think, or cylindroids. Oh, no, Ariamnes uh, uh, cylindroids, yes. So if you see the spider in the field, it will be just dangling like this in open air. And uh, like you won't be able to see. If you just like touch its uh, drag lines, no? then it, you can see these legs. Otherwise, you will just think it's a twig. And then uh, these spiders, I was talking that uh, thomisids, these are... Uh, Ambushers. Hmm. So this what they do. Hmm. You can see these are called crab spiders. Why? First of all, like the structure, and again um, the their movement. Like crabs, you no, know, they will uh, walk lat laterally. So this also works laterally. Here you can see it's feeding on one wasp. Here, this is from I think uh, Nankori Island. Yes. Hmm. Okay. So uh, these two spiders, I think you are able to see. These are sparacids, both Machidops uh, genus. And there is another spider here. I don't, uh, I don't know how many people were able to see this spider. So this is a tarantula. So uh, as I showed earlier in the gills, so this is a tube burrow. So here you see, it comes from here, like comes from here. So this is the part, like this, it has uh, sealed all its way with silk. And its silk will, if you touch its silk, it will be like very smooth, really like a spasmina. And here will be the egg sacs. So, uh, because uh, tarantulas are much, much aggressive, because the males, what they will do, they will come inside and eat the egg sacs. So that's why they try to, as much as they can uh, protect their eggs. And also from this desiccation from the soils or fungal growth. Hmm. And also if you see like in the night, if you, uh, if you are a tarantula watcher, um, like there are people are now like look, look going forests or like um, they're just going outside to watch tarantula because they are so fascinated with them. Huh. If you see them, they will be sitting here just like if you will like catch one orthoptera or like, I mean grasshopper, if you'll catch one grasshopper or something or play, place it here, it will just uh, play um, move with its legs. It will try to sense everything. Huh. Sometimes it will uh, come out, but, um, but please be careful while you are doing this until unless you have the proper idea what you are doing, don't like uh, uh, play with those things. Again, uh, this is the one that I showed in the classification part. So this is a Asianop species, Denopida family. You can see this is called a net casting spider. So what it's do, 
like uh, what it will do uh, you can see now this uh, uh, this is the abdomen part so it will move the abdomen here spin the web ha huh? comb it as you can see like it's properly combed you can see the each of the thread you can see here so it will uh, place it in in its legs it will wait for the prey it um, this species um, here in uh, like middle andaman there is a place in uh, called rangat so here you can uh, there i saw like it was like in this position for at least 30 minutes till it's got it got its prey uh, this species you can find in the bamboo bamboo forests huh? in the, like daytime you won't be able to see this uh, uh, spiders it will be so like because the bamboo forest in the summer season there are all dried up the what the branches so or the leaves so it will be just camouflaging itself uh, beneath the leaf ka midvein hmm this spider so um, uh, in the night it will come out it will uh, create this net like the fisherman throws its nets uh, for catching the fish na it will throw its nets on the bugs down in the ground so it will catch it it will just uh, like uh, hold it up like hook up and uh, it will prey on it so these are uh, um, why i am showing this these are the ecribinid spiders hmm tetragonidae and erinidae so this is a leucus decorata hmm huh. you can see how the uh, uh, what uh, how the or web is much more horizontal than the others uh, in the erinidae that we have seen much more vertical and uh, this is a neosconna crescentusi as you uh, as i said now that uh, sometimes you won't be able to see the spider in the web uh, you have to search uh, it uh, like in some other places hmm like if you see the web like it's a very new web and it's a very like uh, okay some prey are also there like caracas sometimes ants caracas or bugs or coleoptera caracas are there though so um, okay that means the spider is somewhere there so you can like search for the spider somewhere um sometimes it will be like this like camouflaging itself with the grasses or the leaves uh so you have to do a little bit of manual like searching the spider will always not be like this on the web so okay thank you and uh, i think i was like able to do something and uh, please uh, if you have any questions then hello okay so no one has any questions um yes uh, uh, okay some people are okay so antony uh, like this ericide na uh, so there is only i uh, i got where you are coming from but the diversity of ericide you um, get in the western ghats or in the like kerala or uh, tamil nadu ka that uh, part Uh, we don't have that kind of diversity here so we have only one uh, stegodiphus ka species but uh, okay but i have some people like th those who are working for phd on ericidae spiders i can mail you those like those people or i can just tell them to contact you and uh, okay so why okay. 
so why the spiders build webs because it's gravity so why the spiders will go up lot like when you are coming down in the, from a forest uh, like sorry from the stairs it will be much more easier like when you are going down the hill it's much more easier but when you are climbing up the stairs it much more difficult so the spider also do that they will construct more on the like south portion of the web than on the north part yeah sure 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 you can uh, okay i'll i'll write my mail id here if um, i can send you all the papers Uh, Minakshi, you send it to me directly. Wait, I'll, I'll put it for a second. Okay, okay. Yeah. For spider conservation aspect, what do I tell you? Yes, I can tell <laughs> about this like, like for one whole day. My little sister, see herself like this late spider. Like if I'm going home and uh, she will see one spider, like she will tell me to kill it so how i like approached her i would say and then i will say like how you can approach to a larger public so first you uh, tell them not all the spiders that you see are like venomous or uh, like um, tell them like um, like show them how like docile they are they won't do anything they just want to be their own place like if they are on your like um, school or colleges but if you want to do if you few want to do um, like publicly like sensitization citizen awareness those kind of things then uh, what you can do like you can that, that's why i was showing like beautiful spider webs also you can show them those webs like how those webs are so much beautiful and the spiders are just sitting there like a flower and um, some spiders are like they will resemble the flowers itself so not all spiders are big and scary uh, like the tarantula and some spiders are just like 2 mm so many spiders they eat pests they is they eat all the mosquitoes they eat many dipteras they eat many bugs that can harm uh, like some of the grains or like they eat many of the in like uh, disease carrying vectors also so it depends on like the people you are talking to yes 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 there is like this is a completely like uh, that's what i so told the orientation in the first uh, one or sec second slide i told you that they will always see the orientation hmm so this um, so devuti uh, what they will do that uh, they will see the orientation of the forest if you have gone in, like inside the forest if you see when you, uh, there is a spider web there won't be like that much of wind uh, like uh, like that much the place that won't be that much windy if there are like spiders on the windy like road side some spiders will be there then there must be some agricultural land or there must be like salt trees or something is there from where um, that insects are emerging and it will be sticking to the web that's why they are uh, placing their webs they are constructing their webs in the, those places okay <laughs> actually i am also working on that so this is not yet published that um, uh, shana hanif that she asked the question huh so like there are like seven species of tarantulas that i have identified but uh, some of are like uh, not yet published so but uh, the experts have told that the lethal dose that those species have so are not uh, poisonous and uh, the species uh, like from the, species, the some of the therapocytes uh, from the western ghats have uh, come to in 2018 i think manju ma'am have uh, put them in the iucn list she has also given the common name for each and every tarantulas 
but uh, this has not been done yet for uh, Andaman and Nicobar spiders. Uh, you can first, you can see in your uh, house itself, if you have coconut plantation or any farm that uh, cut up uh, like roadside, they will cut up the uh, like uh, soils uh, to construct the road and um, what else? Uh, barks also, sometimes uh, inside the barks, there will be some tarantulas. So, huge number of circles. I think they will cheat with stomachs. Yeah, there are uh, like uh, uh, some papers of uh, Kanha spiders, recent, not recently, JSI has some papers and uh, what, Gazbe. Uh, if you can look at uh, those papers, like what kind of uh, diversity, I think, but uh, Lycosidae, that uh, Aginalosa species is there, that uh, Lycosidae, that, that wolf spider construct webs. If you go like in the morning, you'll see multiple uh, webs in the agricultural field. Uh, that's, that is that uh, Lycosidae, it will bring, uh, construct much, like multiple uh, webs in the field and it will all be like in the morning, it will all be covered with dew drops. <clears throat> I think I answered. Any more questions? Yeah, so there are like um, a recent paper, I uh, forgot it. Um, it was in economic, uh, uh, economic ecology, that paper was there, intraspecific competition in spiders. Uh, I forgot the name of the paper, sorry. But uh, it showed that uh, in spiders, uh, like in barnacles or rice weevils, the amount of intraspecific competition that you see in those organisms, it's much more less. Like the model value, if you put, everything can be put into a mathematic equation. Huh. Just like you, you, I think you people know that. Huh. So if you, they put that all those values into a mathematical equation and what they, uh, what they saw that this uh, intraspecific competition is, uh, Thank you. Okay. So if there is like interspecific competition between them, um, it's very, very less. It's more like a social society, like for human, no, it's kind of that. Huh? Because it, uh, it uh, first, it, uh, uh, what? it uh, saves them from the predators. And second, there is much more chance of prey is getting tackled into the web than like single webs. Like in stegodiverse species that um, Antony was talking about, Ericida family. So I think the time is over. Anish? If uh, there are any more questions, I'll share my mail ID to Anish and uh, you all can get it from him. And I'm also like, uh, just, I have finished my PhD. I'm working on much more other proposals. Uh, and uh, just uh, like, I want to learn about how agro ecosystem spiders and uh, agro forest spiders, agro biomes, them, I can use them for model as a for farmers for biocontrolling agents and uh, if you, you you people also want to do those kind of things on your part huh, please I'll first thing I'll say read papers read like uh, peer-reviewed journal papers and second talk to experts always talk to ex experts It's okay if uh, 
like if anyone can say if there is no question then i can end this meeting okay thank you guys have a great week you are very nice people like asking the proper questions and all it was very nice meeting you all thank you looking forward to hearing from you and please be in contact okay bye